Hello, Internet, and welcome to my review for the finale of Season 1 of The Promised Neverland. Um, when we last left off, the escape started. Uh, Norman's incredible planning. Uh, I called it a little bit too incredible than it actually was uh, last week, because uh, the anime apparently left out Norman knowing about the uh, lighter fluid, but whatever. Uh, thanks to Norman's incredible planning, Emma has left the entire... Uh, five and over group of kids, uh, in on the conspiracy, uh, and successfully thwarted, um, Ray's plot to commit suicide, um, and the kids began their escape with burning down Grace Fieldhouse. Holy shit. Uh, so before we go into the finale, just a reminder that next season is right around the corner, and so fill out my straw poll for the Spring 2019 Anime Reviews in the description down below. Let me know what you want to see me cover next season. Alright, jumping right on in. So the first thing that happens in the episode is Emma tells Ray that they're leaving behind uh, all the four and unders. Uh, which, this, this is a plot line that goes through many different thematic points. Or, or, like, changes its thematic meaning several times in a really quick uh, time span, but it works really well. Because it initially seems like it's a hard admission that, like, they're gonna die out in the real world, so, like, let them have Grace Field House, um, and hopefully they'll figure it out before too long. Um, but then that kind of gets muddled real fast once we get a flashback. Because we see Emma fight against that line of thinking uh, when Gil when Gilda brings up um, leaving the Thorn Unders in the dark. Um, but then the real kicker, the what would be in any other episode the greatest what the fuck moment of the entire episode. This gives us one more once we hit Isabella's flashback. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but we find out that Phil Phil already figured everything out, and I really like the way that he's figured everything out, because Phil, at least in the anime-only fandom, I imagine the manga fandom too, but I'm not in that, um, Phil's become something of a meme, with how he always seems to be there when something is going on, he's kind of like the joke, oh, Phil's the mastermind behind everything, he's always in the right place at the right time. Um, but, like, the way Phil's figured out the truth is because he's always in the right place at the right time. Uh, which is a cool thing to see, I will admit. Um, and we see these actually, like, surprisingly emotionally mature for a four-year-old. More so than, like, Norman and Ray, for certainly. Uh, for sure. Who the, what the fuck is for certainly? Who has ever said for certainly, ever? Anyway. Anyway. Um, so yeah, Phil is, like, a really, a really good character. You know, with a bit of development, I can see, like, my joke favorite character growing into my real favorite character. I don't know where Phil's gonna get that development, because he's left behind by episode's end as the rest of the kids escape into, um, this giant forest. Uh, but anyway, back into the present, uh, finally, Isabella sounds the alarm. Uh, so the whole, like, don't let anyone know plot didn't quite work out, um, because she has a briefcase that doubles as a Tell Demons Things device. Um... But that, that turns the show into a more standard chase than we've ever seen it become. You know, the show's always about, like, everyone kind of knowing things. You know, there weren't that many secrets um, kept between other characters, which is kind of weird given the show's premise. But, like, you know, Isabella knew everyone knew. Everyone knew that Isabella knew at a certain point. Um, so it kind of was about, like, plotting and staying under the radar when, like, the lights were, sh were shining on you. But there was never really a chase going on. There was never any of the sneaking around, you know... Or there was a little bit, not a whole lot. Anyway. Uh, also, with, with, so I, I'll have a more detailed analysis on Isabella later on in the video. Um, but we, after she, she sounds the alarm, she thinks to herself something along the lines of Escape Emma if you can. Uh, and it's not clear in that moment if she's still in her like, typical villainous bragging about how Emma is definitely going to fail... Or if it's, like, a super subconscious desire for her to escape, much like Crone did, um, before she died. Um, and so if I have one complaint about this episode, and it's not really a complaint, but it's a kind of a complaint. Their escape goes a little too perfectly. Norman really planned for every possible outcome, which is a little absurd. <laughs> um, 
It's not full Lonely Island. I retract my Lonely Island critique. Uh, but it's a little out there. Um, but, like, so, you know, it's, it, they completely outsmart the demons by doing the lasso outside the walls and all that bit. Um, but you know what? It feels so good to see the kids come out ahead after, like, three months of them getting beaten down by Isabella in every way, shape, and form, that seeing them win unilaterally feels so good. It's what they deserve. It is what they deserve. And then, but, like, just, just when I'm like, oh, things are going way too well, um, of course, Isabella finds them. Uh, with some flashbacks implying that she tried this plot when she was a kid, uh, but did not succeed. Um, and so, Isabella finds them right as Emma is the last one around. And there's something so anticlimactic about the way this scene ends, that it works really well, um, in a weird way. You know, Isabella just stands there watching as Emma le like, she begs don't go, and then Emma goes anyway. And Emma, and they cut the ropes, and they, like blow in the breeze as Isabella watches in, like, defeat. It's resignation, almost. And, like, I don't know why I like it so much, but it works, but it fits really well. Um, then we get Isabella's flashback. So for 90% of this flashback, I thought it was just really superfluous. We did not need it at all. Uh, there's one thing, um, like, I, I was thinking that, like, we... It was not different enough from Crone to warrant the, like, three or four minutes they got. Uh, but then something interesting happens before the big thing happens. Uh, and we see Isabella pregnant with who we learned as Ray later on. And seemingly drugged up. You know, there is this blankness to her eyes. Normally in anime, eyes are drawn with, like, the anime eyes. Y'all know anime eyes. But, when it, there's, but sometimes a character will be drawn with, like, completely flat irises, Right? And that always reflects some kind of, like, fucked up mental state. So I don't know what's going on with that. I hope we find out um, in the next season or the season after that. I don't know. But then we get the real kicker. And the reason to have the flashback in the first place. Isabella is Ray's bio mom. You know, I was, I was wondering all through the flashback why Leslie's song sounded so familiar. You know, I was listening to the song, I'm like, I know it's come up before somewhere. And it's because Ray must have sung it at some point. Because thanks to Ray's baby memories, the fucking baby memories, uh, he remembers it from his time in Isabella's womb. Um, but like, holy shit, that changed their whole dynamic. You know, I, I, I can't really, comp I, I can't describe, I can't judge this reveal. Because I'd have to go back and rewatch the entire season with this spoiler in mind to really know if it makes sense. You know, Toonami's done the show in two weeks. I'll watch it then and see what happens. Get back to y'all by the time season two starts. Next. Next. It's not until 20 fucking 20. Anyway. But yeah, I, I cannot reckon that reveal at, at this moment. Is something we'll need to see the whole way through, both the way Isabella treats Ray and the way Ray treats Is Isabella, knowing that. Um, now we need to talk about Isab Isabella as a whole. Because I've been going back and forth throughout the season on who I think Isabella really is, like deep down in her core. Uh, you know, before, la before last week, I thought that she was just, that she did genuinely care about these kids. Um... And she wanted them to have the best life they could before they died. Uh, then last week I was like, no, she doesn't. She only cares about Ray's brain. And with a, that, that's the scene that's the hardest to really put through. Because that's her son. And even at, like, not, not her, all the children are her children. Ray is her son. Her, like, she gave birth to Ray. But, like, when she's doing the fire extinguisher... Her thoughts are still, let me save his brain, at least. I don't know. I, I've not quite reckoned with that yet. In the end, though, I think she's not that different from Crone. Just like Crone, she's willing to do anything for survival, but also kind of hates that she has to do all this for survival. You know, deep down, she wants the kids to live, but she's also worried about herself first. She is definitely selfish, and it's only once she's lost 
you know, at the end, you know, she realizes that she doesn't, that she doesn't have it in her to kill Emma herself, I think. I think Emma's maybe, like, her favorite. Uh, besides Ray, who's her own son, of course. Um, but, you know, she wants the kids to live, but she knows that she, that they can't without causing her to, like, be killed by the demon. So she, and she's not nice enough to sacrifice herself. But once she's, once she's lost, and she realizes the only fate left to her is to be killed by the demons, because that's, that's what's gonna happen. Isabella's definitely dying after this. Um, I, I don't see a world where the demons let her live after this fuck up. Uh, but now that she realizes that she's lost, just like Crone, her final thoughts are, live, damn it, live. Um, but yeah, Isabella's dead. She has, she, much like Crone, has her last moment of heroism, and then die, and then she's gonna die. She's not dead yet, but she'll be dead by next season, I imagine. Uh, let me get back one final scene with our kids, and the season fucking ends before we get to see, before we get to see what's outside. And we have to wait a whole year to find out what happens next in 20 fucking 20. Anyway, that's how, that's where the, the season ends. So what a finale this was. It certainly was not as adrenaline pumping as last week's episode. I definitely noticed throughout it that it was not the it was a fairly like slow a fairly sparse finale, I'd say. It's not slow by any means. Um, but like not a whole lot actually happens in it. The kids finish the escape, they don't run into too much trouble, um, then we get Isabella's flashback and the season ends. Um But it still packs more than a few punches. Like Phil! For starters, um, who's like a fucking super genius four-year-old or something, which admittedly is far from the weirdest thing this show has ever done, so I'll allow it. Baby memories, I have not forgotten about you. Speaking of baby memories, we got the ultimate gut punch the show's ever given us with the reveal that Ray is Isabella's biological son. Like, holy shit, I was just like jaw dropped, my friends. Jaw dropped at that. And the way Ray finally got to see the power of having faith in others rather than working alone, much like a, a certain other phenomenal anime ending in the next few days, was great to see. You know, we got more of the uh, thematic of the themes of the, of the series of like relying on others and not doing it all on your own. Uh, beyond those punches, though, this episode was surprisingly sparse. You know, like it felt really good uh, to watch the kids escape and like fully outwit all the demons and the story is not over so i'm not angry at all for how well the plan went they fucking earned it but it definitely felt like the crux of the action was last week that this is just this it's not quite epilogue worthy of um of like of uh of already mostly over but it's in that zone i'd say it definitely felt like the crux of the action was last week um but yeah that's the finale uh, as so before i go before we leave for uh, Promise Neverland, um, Promise Neverland is a series. So, it wasn't without its chrome-shaped flaws, but on the whole, this was a tense thriller of the sort rarely seen in anime. It had lovable characters, scheming villains, a mysterious world always just out of reach, and even the scheming villains are vaguely sympathetic. It's a show that's an easy recommendation to anyone seeking drama, tension, good characters, or just good writing, Chrome notwithstanding. You know, it's an all-around good time. It's far from the greatest show ever. Um, and any other season, though, this would be an anime of the, this, this would be anime of the season, no question. It's just unlucky that it got stuck with the actual greatest show ever, Mob Psycho. Um, but yeah, it's a good show. It's a great show, and I highly recommend it. If you're watching a review for the finale, I'm sorry I spoiled... Without seeing the rest of the show, I'm sorry I spoiled the entire show for you. Uh, but that's your own damn fault at a certain point. Um, but yeah, next time, I'll see you all in 2020. Or any other time, because I have a shit ton of content on the channel. Check it out. I used to end uh, finale videos with saying everything I'm doing. But I'm doing so much now, I'm not going to do that anymore. Uh, so... Look in the description, or the, the my profile, find it there. There is almost 500 videos now you can check out of at least a dozen different series, uh, manga and anime. Um, but I'm going to leave this video off here. Hope you all enjoyed uh, the video and the episode and the series, because or the season, because it's over. Um, 
And if you did, drop me a like or subscribe or fill that straw poll to let me know what, what you want to see next season. And, you know, do whatever the fuck you want. I don't really care. That's not true. I care a whole lot. Um, and as always, people, keep kicking ass and I'll see you in the future. Bye.